In another unprecedented move during his tenure, Pope Francis has created an office to judge bishops involved in or connected to the sexual abuse of minors. The move meets a key demand by victims groups to establish clear procedures to hold bishops more accountable. It has long been the dirty, excuse me, it has long been the dirty Catholic Church secret. Priests as pedophiles and the damage they have done over generations. No pope has been so willing to take at head and right on eye to eye as Pope Francis approving the creation of a tribunal to hear cases of bishops accused in covering up such crimes. But is he going far enough? The Wednesday news call begins with veteran broadcast journalist and founder of JaneUnchained.com, Jane Velez Mitchell, joined by the chairman of the Society to Advance Financial Education, Steve Beeman. I thank you both for being here today. And Jane, I'm going to go ahead and begin with you first. The Vatican now finally going after bishops accused of failing to protect kids from sexually abusive priests. It is, in many minds, far too late, but maybe at least they're going to get it right this time. I love this Pope. I love the fact that he is addressing the issue that could take down Catholicism. Let's face it, pedophilia is something that occurs to a lot of people every time they see a priest or see a Catholic church because this scandal has been so global, so huge, has gone on for so many decades, has involved so many thousands of priests, thousands of victims, billions of dollars in settlements. There needs to be a reckoning. The Catholic Church needs to look at the big elephant in the room and this Pope I really hope we'll do it with this action. Way to go. Well, when you say take down the Catholic Church, though, Jane, shouldn't we say that this may repair the Catholic Church? You don't want to necessarily look to take down the religion and all the good that it does, do you? No, I'm saying that this horrific, ongoing, decades-long scandal, this what some reports have described as an epidemic of pedophilia among a Catholic priests could take down Catholicism. That it's really what a lot of people think of when they think of Catholicism because of the cover-ups, because of the transfer of pedophile peace, priests from one a jurisdiction to another after they've been caught so that they can molest at the next place they go to. I mean, how can you have moral authority and maintain the moral high ground and lecture people about their behavior when you're molesting boys. He has to address this. Indeed he does, and it's about time that he did. Steve, I'm going to come to you with a different take on religion today, because here's something else that has a lot of people talking. The Fox Television Network, which is not the Fox News Network, they are basically the same company, but it's two entirely different entities. The Fox Television Network now has a series called Lucifer, beginning this fall. And there's a lot of people, including a number of groups that are asking them to take this off the air. They say that this is an attack on Catholicism. Is it that or is it just a money grab? Oh, I think it's clearly just a money grab. They're playing to the most purient interest in people, trying to amp the thing up with the horror stuff and all the spiritual issues. But, you know, the, the church, and I, I want to go back a little bit because you've got a billion-dollar enterprise here that is actively, I hope, stepping up against things like this Fox program because it's clearly not building up people. It's tearing people down at the core, and that really isn't a sustainable model. Jane, I think that's a good point, too, to make here, that it, it tears people down in many ways, and it doesn't make a difference whether you're a Catholic or not, this is in many ways an attack on a religion, and I think we can see why then people are offended. Oh, come on. I mean, they've been saying these kinds of things back since Shakespeare and before. Uh, you're always going to offend somebody when you're talking about some kind of fictional presentation of something. I don't think that's a problem. I think what the real problem is with Catholicism right now has been a, a, a long, decades-long refusal to look at an epidemic of molestation that was occurring okay, within that the I, church. That I'm I get, I'm very Jane. happy that, that Pope get. Francis is doing something about it. We've already it. talked about that. I get that. I thank you for that. Let's go ahead and move on here. Steve, let's come to you about what has happened in Texas. The officer who was involved in the video that has gone viral in the incident in Texas has resigned. There are those people feeling that he should have resigned. Others believe that even his own management there, the police department there, threw him under the bus and used him as a sacrificial lamb. What do you think the reality is in all this? I think the reality is somewhere in the middle. I mean, clearly this video is an indictment of his behavior. He was a martial arts expert, as I understand it, or a, at least a uh, self-defense expert. And I think it looks and shows that he went a little overboard. Now, the police commissioner, as I understand it, came out today talking about this resignation and supporting it, saying there was no place in that police force for this kind of behavior. 
I think we have to wait until the facts do come out fully before we harshly judge this officer. But certainly prima facie, it looks like a really bad situation, and there maybe the right thing has happened. Steve, don't we also have a responsibility factor that's involved with the kids that are there? Because if we're going to go ahead and be serious about this and talk right down the middle on this, when you're involved with the cops, if the cop tells you to sit down, you sit down and you shut up. And quite, that, quite too often, there's a lot of people, whether they're kids or adults, who don't want to do it. They want to get right in the face of the cops every time. And, Ed, there is no question about that. The fact of the matter is that our entire nation, we're watching the police get beat down off this stuff while kids and even adults continue to just ignore their orders. That is not the way to have a civil society, not a way to operate a country based on laws. And unfortunately for all of us, that's going to accelerate until parents start to get serious with their kids. Jane, let me talk to you now about something else that is going on in Texas. A federal appellate court up, upholding some of the toughest provisions of a Texas abortion law. Texas can require all all abortion clinics in the state to meet the same building, equipment, and staffing standards that hospital-style surgical centers must meet. This could form numerous clinics to close. Your take. I hope it's appealed. I hope it's overturned. It's totally deceptive and disingenuous. They're basically claiming they're trying to make uh, abortion safer for women when the abortions are already fine in the uh, procedure rooms that they have. What they're doing is trying to create impossible standards to force these abortion clinics out of business. It's a deceptive approach. If you're anti-abortion, just say you're anti-abortion, but don't play these kinds of games with the laws to try to force these abortion clinics under. What about those people who say, though, that they are trying to make it safer, Jane? Is there a possibility here, just the, even the slightest possibility, that there are those abortion clinics that need to be made safer? I don't believe so. Abortions have been occurring in these exact same, same types of facilities for decades, and that's not a problem. They're really trying to stamp out abortion. There's only 18 clinics in Texas, and this is going to close almost half of them. So we have a problem here because one of our big societal problems is um, unwanted pregnancies and the societal repercussions of that. Now, you've already gotten rid of the taboo of having children out of wedlock. It's called the Bristol Palin effect. So we are creating a system where we're going to deprive women, if we keep going in this direction, uh, of the ability to end an unwanted pregnancy or prevent a pregnancy. So if you're going to wipe out abortion, you better step up the family planning. Otherwise, we're going to have a crisis on our hands. All right, I got about a minute left here. I'm going to go to something a little bit lighter here to close things out. Steve, because you're the money guy here this absolutely speaks to money a money grab if you will the international air transport association optimum carry-on baggage size <laughs> guidelines guess what everybody's going to have to go out now and buy brand new carry-on bags steve i swear to you if there was ever a time where they said this is just our way to make a couple of more bucks for you to check your bags this really speaks to it doesn't it you know, Ed, I love that you brought me into this one and not the one before it. That one was getting my ire up a bit. But yeah, this is a typical airline thing where they try to nickel and dime you so they can advertise these cheap fares. But boy, oh boy, once you get on the plane, you're paying for that extra seat. You're paying for your baggage. You're paying for your drink. And before you know it, you'll be paying for the gasoline on a separate ticket. Wait a minute. Aren't we paying for the gasoline now? Steve, seriously. Yeah, they don't I, I, item it. If, if I look right on the bottom end of my ticket, I swear I can see at least $8 a gallon somewhere there on, on a regular <laughs> I basis. I think airline fuel's up around there right now, so that would make some sense. Jane, I got about 20 seconds left. What do you think? Big money grab by the, uh, by the airlines here? Look, if they keep going, this is what they're going <laughs> to allow on to the planes. And that's my makeup bag, I'm embarrassed to say. No, listen, that was devastating to me because I take a lot of flights and the saving grace is I can grab my suitcase and run and grab a cab and I don't have to wait four hours for the baggage claim. I'm you know, and so this is, is going to ruin my travel. Jane, experience. I'm surprised you even showed us a bag because everybody knows you don't need a makeup bag. We know that already, Jane, so don't tell us that. Jane Velez Mitchell, <laughs> Steve Beeman, always a pleasure. Thanks so much, Steve. We'll see you later on in the show. Talk some stocks. All right. Thanks Coming much. up next here on Midpoint, the reality being missed every time we hear the phrase Black Lives Matter. We'll tackle that next.